now be joined by our race winner of today's Chicago street race, Alex Bowman. Alex, congratulations on your win. Um, we'll continue with questions. Um, I got one. You got one. Go ahead. Hey, Bob. Remember those shoes Noah was wearing at media availability? You got to wear them next week. And good luck finding a pair. I'll sponsor them. <laughs> what size are you? Okay. okay. All right, Bob, we'll just go ahead and kick off with you. Bob looked at me like I couldn't do it, so here we are. Yeah. Um, and part of that is you led six laps all year, and oh, now you've damn. led. <laughs> and you And you lead. And so you lead the final eight today, and so I'm curious, like, when you haven't been up front that much, what's going through your mind, and are you wondering, do I still know how to hold somebody off? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the position that we were in, like I knew as we got tire temp, we were a lot better than the 60. Um, I didn't know what was coming behind us on slicks. I didn't know how hard I could run without killing the wet tire just because I haven't been in that position. Obviously missed all the wet laps at New Hampshire, missed a lot of laps here last year. So um, I probably could have made a lot more pace there with like, three to go and with two to go. Um, I was kind of trying to take care of the tires and then I realized that there was slicks coming and um, ran pretty hard there for, for the last two laps. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think I was thinking about, I knew there wasn't gonna be a lot of laps because there was only so much time left in the race. And um, I, I knew with a gap that I saw behind me that we were in a really good spot. All right, Nate. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Alex, your interview with, with Marty out there, you sounded like the weight of the world was sort of off your shoulders. You mentioned the brain injury, the, the back injury. Um, I mean, you sounded like a guy who kind of had saved his job with this win. Um, did, did it feel that way to you? That like that this is a job that sort of secures your future in a sport where you know everything is sort of dependent on always winning? Yeah, I mean, certainly I have a contract through like the end of 2026 and um, that hasn't been questioned as much as Twitter would like to believe it has but um, you know at, at the same time it's more about like for me just overcoming everything that's happened um, in my life in the last two years you know it's it's been really difficult right like um, the concussion and then to straight away go break my back after recovering from that and um, and then just tremendously struggle through last year and kind of lose our way a little bit it uh, it was really difficult and and you know there's a lot of noise and um, and that makes it difficult for the team you know I'm, I'm proud of, of my guys for being able to shut that out and, and work hard each and every week and, and have confidence in the decisions that we make and the race cars that we bring to the racetrack so um, yeah, just, uh, it means a lot to me to be able to overcome a lot and do something that I don't think a lot of people here really would have thought this weekend that we could. Um, quick follow up. We saw you got hit on the cool down lap by Bubba and then you apologized for, you know, spinning him in the interview, but like, what did, what did you make of that? Yeah, you I'd be mad too. Um, I ruined his day, you know, I, we had a, a really, I mean, I, the restart was chaotic, right? I, I just made every wrong decision I possibly could. Um, and I was, I was fighting with my windshield wiper switch, trying to get the thing working and I couldn't get it working. And I was focused on that, missed the corner and cleaned them out. Like I, I locked all four tires up and slid right into them, but I just messed up and, and absolutely ruined his day. So, um, I'm pretty hard on myself when I make mistakes like that, and, and I've been embarrassed about it since it happened. The rain delay was a lot of me just sitting there being embarrassed and being mad at myself. So uh, he has every right to be mad, and I'd be mad too. And I tried to call him during the rain delay, and I, sh I shot him a text. So nothing I can do to make it better, and I'm, I'm sure us winning probably only makes it worse. But, um, yeah, just Bubba and I – we had our deal a long time ago, but like even today, we raced the hell out of each other, but we gave each other a lot of space and it was really fun racing with them. And um, that's, we've raced each other super fair and super clean. And um, I just messed up and ruined his day. So I hate that. Should NASCAR penalize him? I mean, your window net was down. I think. No. 
no, he, he like barely hit me. Everything was fine and it was plenty deserved. All right, Jordan. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. Um, what's it like going 80 races without a win when you're a Hendrick Motorsports driver? It's not a lot of fun, Jordan. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, we won four races in 21. We won right off the bat in 22. And then we had kind of got, we had a rough summer in 22 and then got back rolling. And then I got hurt. And, and obviously we started 23 really fast. And then I got hurt again. Um, so yeah, it, it's really difficult, right? Like, um, obviously we have all the tools we need to win and, and our teammates have been really good throughout that time. Um, but you know, we just, we couldn't put it together. So, um, it has certainly been a large mental test to go through everything that has happened in the last two years and, and try to continue to overcome that each and every week. Um, especially when things aren't going your way. And, and honestly, the last month has been um, super frustrating for us. We've had a lot of things outside of our control, um, you know, cost us a lot of points and it's been, been really frustrating. So um, to be able, like, I, there's a lot of emotions that go along with, with this just because of how hard that has been. I understand you, you have a contract. We all know these things go, but we also know that life at Hendrick is comes with pressure and everything. And so when you feel like you've been on the hot seat as of late and like you needed to up your performance to, to maintain that status with them? Um, you know, I, I think you need to win races whenever you're at HMS. Um, but I, I certainly, nobody's made me feel like I'm on the hot seat. Um, there's never been a single conversation with a single person that has questioned anything to do with that at all. It's, it's all been, what do you need? How, how can we help you? How can we support the team? Um, you know, I think that's the great part about Hendrick Motorsports is like whatever the noise is outside, everybody inside is, is never going to like, like tear each other down. They're always going to be supportive. So, um, you know, we've had a lot of support from the other three teams and, and from everybody at HMS over the last couple of years. And, um, yeah. All right, we're going to go Zach and then Jeff. Go ahead, Zach. Zach Sterniolo, NASCAR.com. Alex, um, as the Cup Series has raced more on uh, in wet conditions, how have you as a driver had to evolve through that? And obviously you won this race on, on wet tires as well. So um, how, how have you had to evolve and um, what comfort did you feel today? Yeah, it, it's definitely different. Honestly, I've missed so many of the wet laps, right? Like I missed a lot of the race last year. Um, and then I missed all the wet stuff at Loudon. Uh, so just trying to learn, um, obviously the first really wet laps today, I did a, a really poor job from turn 12 to, to turn two. And, um, and I hate that, but I think just constantly trying to learn and search for grip and, and see how the track evolves. Racetrack's pretty dry at the end there. Right. But, um, watching how the racetrack gripped up, it's pretty difficult to see the, the dry line, um, in these cars, like the windshield gets so dirty, um, that you can't, you run the windshield wiper, you're just going to smear it all. Right. So, um, you're looking through like a really dirty windshield, trying to find a dry line. It's, it's tough, but it's been a fun learning experience and, um, yeah, definitely different. All right, Jeff. Reddick had said, you know, if he doesn't hit the wall chasing you down, um, he thought he was going to get there, but he didn't know what would have happened when he got there. What do you think that battle could have been like um, coming into the final couple corners there? Yeah, Tyler and I have raced each other super clean over the years, and um, we're, we're good pals. Obviously, I crashed his teammate earlier in the day, though, so kind of all gloves are off going for a win. Um, I think it would have been difficult for him to pass. And, like, I... I guess I really don't know because I couldn't see that well how wide the dry line was, right? So if it's two car widths wide getting into 12, like, yeah, he could probably get me. Um, I do think I turned the pace up quite a bit on like the last lap and a half once I realized that somebody behind me had, had slicks and was coming. Um, but yeah, it would have been a really good race. I smoked the fence a couple times there at the end too. So um, definitely giving it all, all we had. All right, we're going to go – Or okay, sorry, Cole and then Lee, and then I know I have one over here. There you go. Sorry, the light is very – Super bright. Yeah. Wait, you go ahead. Sure. Yep, go ahead. 
All right, first off, congratulations. Thank you. On the race. Uh, Nick Mitrovich with News Nation. Uh, Joey sang the praises of the city from the whole week to the race itself, to the fans. What's your selling point for this race coming back as the champion, seeing it's the last year of the contract, the third year, third race? What's your selling point to, about this city? Yeah, it's, um, it's an incredible event. You know, it's so different than our normal day-to-day -day race weekends, right? Like staying in a hotel, walking to the racetrack, like all the, the different things. Um, it's super cool. Like the racetrack is super fun. All the events that go on are super fun. Um, obviously, the this, this city of Chicago, everybody here has been so welcoming, and um, that's been really neat. So I think just... Um, you know, seeing people that have never been to races before come here is, is really cool. And, and then also the fans that that have um, have come to the city to watch the race is, is great, too. So obviously it's been two uh, chaotic races with the weather. Um, maybe we'll get a dry one next year. But uh, yeah, it's it's been a, a super fun event and just uh, a really meaningful event to be able to win. Thanks. All right, Cole, go ahead. Cole Kusumano, Arizona Republic. Congrats, Alex. Thank you. We saw the emotion post-race. We've discussed a lot about your struggles last year and the difficulties, you know, personally. So taking the driver out of the equation, how much did Alex Bowman, the person, need this victory? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think I needed it. Um, I just think it uh, it feels good to to be able to, to do that, you know. Um, a lot of things, like... Gosh, the last cup race I won, I remember, like, we're in Vegas. Um, we had won a lot pretty recently to that, and this, we all landed at, like, 4 o'clock. And every other race, like, we had celebrated and had so much fun with the team, and we were all kind of like, nah, it's too late. Like, we don't need to celebrate. We'll, like, celebrate the next one or whatever. And I have regretted that ever since, obviously. Uh, so that is not going to happen tonight. <laughs> um, but, you know as a human being, like, like I'm just a dude trying to do my job the best I possibly can. Right. And I see everything that gets said about me. So, um, to be able to, to overcome what I've gone through and, and to end up back here, it feels really good. I, I didn't need it. Um, certainly a lot in my life that I, I don't need and, um, I'm just appreciative of it, but, uh, yeah, it feels really good to be here. All right. We're going to go to Lee. Go ahead, Lee. Lee Spencer, Sirius XM, NASCAR Radio, and CatchFence.com. Can you basically tell us what you went through after you broke the back? What were the, you know, the kind of rehab that they put you through? Because we were on chase like every week. Why aren't you running better? You know, you kind of almost got a hall pass because, you know, he's a former champion and had been with the company. And can you kind of take us through what you suffered through to get back to even where you could drive before you got to this place? Yeah, honestly, you know, like I, I don't want to make it out like the back injury was like this awful thing. Like uh, it hurt, um, but, you know, there wasn't a lot I could do, right? So um, everything post back injury was just pain tolerance. So getting back in the gym was just based on what I could do and, and what pain I could handle. And like it hurt really bad for two weeks and then started to, to taper off. And I started to be able to kind of get back mobile again and, and all that. Um, I would say the mental side of all of it was, was much harder than the physical side, like the physical side. Yeah. I mean, I ran the 600 that first race back and I felt great in the car and then I could hardly get out of the race car afterwards. And, could hardly walk the rest of the week. Um, and there were times it hurt really bad, but, uh, the mental side of just struggling so badly and, and not running how we expect to run, uh, was certainly much tougher than, than any of the physical stuff could have been. And also difficult seeing someone else drive the 48. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just, I think I remember, I remember when I got to the hospital in Iowa sitting there, like, knowing that something was wrong and the doctor came in and he was like, I have great news. Your neck is totally fine, but you broke your back and just feeling like I let my whole team down. Um, like I let ally down and, and Mr. Hendrick down and, uh, especially like the concussion stuff. 
we blow a tire running a cup car. That's so different than breaking your back going and doing your hobby, right? Like that uh, felt pretty self-inflicted. And um, I spent my 30th birthday in the hospital in, in Burlington, Iowa. Um, it was not a lot of fun. So yeah, just um, that was that was tough. I felt like I let them down. But like the first thing Mr. Hendricks said is, is, is we'll get through it and whatever you need, we're going to get you help with. And everybody was so incredibly supportive. Um, and life got difficult after that. Right. But, um, yeah, just without everybody's support sticking behind me, um, certainly couldn't have overcome that. All right. <clears throat> Apologies guys. I'm not going to get to everyone's question. Um, tonight Alex still has some post race things he still has to do. I do. Uh, you do. Yes. There's a little bit left in your okay. run of show. Um, and I don't know if you heard Alex's interview, but you have some partying you plan to do. Yeah. When can I start drinking as well? So, um, <laughs> so man, let me tell you about how great NASCAR is to us drivers. I got to my hotel room and there was a little box with my name on it that had a bottle of bourbon in it. So that's in my bag. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but I've got a, a couple bottles that uh, were bought early in 22 that were like, the next win, we're going to drink these. And they've been sitting on the counter way too fucking long. So, um, yeah. So to everybody that said I, I couldn't win and don't deserve to be at Hendrick Motorsports and all that bullshit, um, cheers to you. All right, Alex. We appreciate the time you've spent with us. Congratulations again on that win. Thanks, guys. Good job, driver.